What is a Triad Council? It's an organization of senior citizens working together to keep seniors safe from scams and other crimes and promote safety awareness for seniors in the community. On our Triad Council, we also have help from the Sheriff's Department, District Attorney's Office, Danvers Senior Center Director, Danvers Police and Fire Departments, Danvers Housing Authority, and other social service agencies such as the North Shore uh, Elders. Many, uh, we have had the File of Life program where we provide magnetic File of Life folders which go on your refrigerator and small File of Life folders you carry on your person to provide medical and contact information to those EMTs who might find you unable to respond in an emergency. We have also aimed to ensure through our Numbers Up program that homes and businesses have their street number displayed properly so that emergency personnel can find your location as quickly as possible when that 911 call is made. Through our Yellow Dot program, we provide Yellow Dot stickers which are placed on your car's rear window and we take your picture to be put on an emergency medical contact info card which goes into your glove box so that EMTs will be able to have as much info as possible if they find you unresponsive in an accident. Our new project is a cell phone pocket designed to hold a small file of life card with info in case your phone is locked and emergency contacts are not available. We were able to purchase these thanks to a donation from the Danvers Friends of the Council on Aging. We were also able to purchase 300 more emergency grab and go bags, again with the help of the Danvers Friends of the Danvers Council on Aging. The idea of these bags came from those affected by the Danvers Port explosion in 2006. You can see all of our previous Triad Corner programs on the Town of Danvers website, danversma.gov, by clicking on the Departments, then Social and Senior Services, then Triad Safety Programs. Then scroll down to the DCAT Triad Corner Archives section. Today, we will be discussing tips to help seniors drive safer. First, we will show a video called Reviewing the Road, and then I will introduce my guest for today's program. When we drive, we are constantly bombarded with information. We need to be able to prioritize it and make split-second decisions. We've seen how infrastructure improvements help us make these decisions and create safer roadways. But what about our ability to read the roads? The better we are at reading our roads, the less likely we are to get confused or distracted looking at things like our GPS and phones. Do you know how to tell which side of the road an exit will be on? It's indicated on highway signs by the position of the arrow. An arrow on the left of the sign means the exit is on the left. If the arrow is on the right, so is the exit. Do you know which direction two-digit interstates run? If they are odd-numbered, they run north and south. If they are even, they run east and west. Three-digit interstates are simply offshoots of two-digit routes. The odd-numbered ones are spurs or offshoots that don't reconnect to a major road. The even ones are loops or beltways that do reconnect. Here's another one. Do you know the name of this symbol? It's called a chevron, and it warns you of an upcoming sharp curve or direction change so you can reduce your speed accordingly. Road signs have their own colors and shapes to help you read and comprehend them quickly. Yellow signs give warnings and are usually diamond shaped. Red signs are regulatory signs. Blue signs provide information, like where hospitals and gas stations are, and orange signs are generally about road construction. With work zones, you should always expect the unexpected, such as reduced speeds, lane changes, and the presence of workers and equipment. Some of the most important signs have their own distinct color and shape combination. For example, railroad crossing signs are the only round warning signs, while stop signs and yield signs have their own distinct shape. This may seem like basic information, but ignoring or not seeing roadway signs is the leading cause of urban crashes. Speaking of color, white lines separate traffic that is moving in the same direction and show you where the right edge of the road is. Yellow lines separate traffic in opposite directions and show you the left edge of the road. You can only pass or change lanes when there is a dashed line. A single dashed line means lane changes are allowed from both sides. A solid line means no passing or lane change is allowed. When there is one solid and one dashed line, you are allowed to cross from the dashed side. 
That distinct sound is a rumble strip. These rays or groove sections of pavement cause a sound and distinct vibrations letting you know that you're too far off the road. Rumble strip warnings reduce ROR or run off the road crashes by as much as 80%. Do you know the three R's of rumble strip safety? They are recognize, react, and recover. Recognize rumble strips when you see them on the road. React calmly if you start to run onto a rumble strip, staying off the gas or brake. Recover by allowing the rumble strip to let you regain control and steer back onto the road carefully. Know and avoid the most common reasons people run off the road. Driving too fast, driving while distracted, and driving when tired or alcohol impaired. Our roadways are being built and improved with our safety in mind, so our minds should also be focused on safety as we read the road, drive safely. Okay, thanks for watching that video. I think that was uh, very important. My guest today is Michelle Ellix, who is the Community Outreach Coordinator for the Registry of Motor Vehicles. And uh, after reviewing, uh, after reading that, uh, reading the road video, let's talk about some of the issues that uh, stood out in the video as the most common driving errors for seniors to be aware of. What do you think, Michelle? Well, the Biggest thing that I noticed, Lou, and first of all, thank you for having me on your program. Um, but I noticed the video clip included a driver holding, physically holding a mobile device. Yes. And I'd really like to emphasize that here in Massachusetts, um, there is the hands-free law, which was passed back in November, and it went into effect last month. Yeah. Um, so drivers, motorists should be aware that it is illegal to be holding a device, manipulating Absolutely. a mobile device while driving. And I think especially for older adults, that divided attention tends to be quite problematic when, when trying to drive. And as sure. we know, you know, driving is a complex skill, Very quite a complex skill. And, um, and to divide one's attention between a distraction and trying to pay attention to the road, that's really when, colli uh, when collisions happen. You know, there's a lot of distractions out there too, uh, such as with left-hand turns onto oncoming traffic, uh, can be a hazard for seniors. Mm -hmm. um, how how is that a hazard for seniors? Sure, sure. In terms of um, making a left-hand turn. It, it tends to be more problematic for older adults for a number of reasons. Um, in fact, the when we look at the crash data, Lou, the <clears throat> It, it really shows us that failure to yield the right of way tends to be overrepresented for older adults in terms of crashes. So, so what that means is that older adults are having more difficulty trying to make a left-hand turn or um, trying to judge the right of way or if it's safe to pull out from a parking lot, let's say, or maybe okay. is it safe to pull out from a driveway into the main flow of traffic. And then the third um, circumstance would be trying to safely change a lane on a highway okay. or even merging onto a highway. So okay. those all deal with right of way. Right. And particularly that left-hand turn, Lou, is, is, as I said, problematic because left-hand turn, um, the driver must um, first of all decide how much distance is between them and the oncoming car, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So you're relying on your depth perception, relying on your peripheral view to make sure there's nothing coming from either side. Um, and then once you decide, okay, it's safe for me to execute that left turn, Yeah. How long does it take that information to be processed by my brain and then for my body to execute that turn? So that's all reaction time. So it's really all tied in together between good vision, identifying what the, the hazard might be, sure. identifying when it's safe to make that left turn, and then the brain processing that information, and then, as I said, wow. executing and making the turn safely. And one really important piece about that yeah. left-hand turn, low is yeah. that um, the person person, the driver making the left is almost always at fault. So, you yeah. know, 99.9% .9 of the time, the person making the left-hand turn, if a collision does happen, it is 
the fault of the person making the left-hand turn in most cases. And in a lot of cases, people uh, turn their wheels. You come mm -hmm. down, so you see somebody making a left-hand turn, and their wheels are turned pretty much, you know, so that if they got pushed from the rear, uh, that's a, a common accident, I would think, yeah. that they would be pushed right in right. oncoming Right, you're traffic. right. That's a really good point. Always keep your steering wheel straight until you're able to proceed yeah. and execute that turn. Yeah. And always use your directional. Uh, and really expect the unexpected when we're Absolutely. driving. You really have to make sure it is safe to, 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 to go. How can, how can seniors be more aware of traffic uh, when they come to a stop sign? So um, really any age driver, Lou, in order to be a safe driver, should be scanning the road for potential hazards. So, but as we, I like to call it growing up, as we grow up, our useful field of view tends right. to get smaller. So that right. means that we're focusing right in front of us generally. And when we're driving, that's not a safe way to drive. If I'm just focusing what's immediately in front of me, I'm missing so much, um, so much important information. So really, yeah. older drivers should be scanning, constantly scanning the roadway for potential hazards. And as you mentioned, at the stop sign, <laughs> so important to come to a complete, complete stop. stop. Not a rolling Not stop. Not a okay. roll. It's illegal to so, roll through a stop sign. I, I like to think of the three-second rule. And yes. when you, when you yes. come to a stop, if you have that three-second, you count one, two, and three, you're obviously, like you said, yeah. you're, you're going to be scanning. That's you're not right. doing a quick look. That's right. And uh, unfortunately, with today's driving, you see somebody coming down the street. You don't realize that they're probably doing uh, maybe 10, 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to uh, be aware of the fact that that person is coming too right. fast That's and, right. and, That's and right. wait. That's right. Let's see. Um, well... I, I guess we're getting into the next question. What dangers are there to seniors in driving too aggressively or too slow? Sure. I, again, for um, any <laughs> age driver, um, a driver needs to be aware of the posted speed limit at right. all times. The speed limit is set for the amount of speed the road can handle. Okay. So it it's all determines on what what's the um, the width of the road. What's you know are there twists and turns in the road? This is a straight road. So the speed limit is set for a reason, and it's also set, Lou, for. Uh, perfect conditions, perfect weather Absolutely. conditions. Yeah. So really, a, a safe driver really should be mindful of what are the con current conditions, conditions. while yeah. driving. Um, and if needed, drop the speed if it's in clement weather. Really, my best advice if, if the weather is um, lousy outside, stay in. Don't drive. Don't, you know, the uh, road, wet pavement, yeah. um, tires will not have as much traction. So really, our cars handle differently in different types of road. But Absolutely. for older adults, um, being mindful of the speed limit and going too slowly, Lou, can be very dangerous that, as yeah, well. So absolutely. we need to maintain the posted right. speed limit in yeah. order to be safe driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it brings up the point about uh, seniors uh, driving uh, where the rules of the road may have, have changed uh, over the years. Uh, are there any, what do you think of any new laws that might be out there? Sure, a couple of the newer <coughs> laws. Um, well, we just talked about one, which is the hands-free law, right. which is no mobile devices while driving. Okay. Um, the, another law would be the move over law, mm -hmm. which was passed a couple of years ago. And the move over law states that if there is an emergency vehicle stopped okay. on the side of the road with lights flashing, yeah. We, the motorist, must either move over one lane if it's a two-lane road going okay. one direction, two lanes going one direction, two lanes going the other. So I, the motorist, would move over one lane if it's safe to do so. Yeah. So before I move over, I need <laughs> to scan over my left shoulder, sure. may check that blind spot, make sure it's safe to move over, signal, and move into that that left lane. Okay. But if there's no space to move over, Lou, um, the motorist needs to drop their speed well below the speed limit while passing that emergency vehicle. Okay. And what do we mean by an emergency vehicle? It includes, of course, police, right. fire, ambulance, yeah. tow truck tow trucks, operators, yeah. as well as highway 
trucks. So so yeah, anything with trucks. the with the amber lights. Yes, the, the yes, flashing. amber or blue f or red flashing yeah, lights. Right. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's one of the new laws. And then last but not least, <laughs> <laughs> the um, windshield wipers on. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so right. if you're driving and your windshield wipers <laughs> are on, Massachusetts yeah. law requires that your headlights be yeah, on as right. well. It makes you more visible. Um, and uh, others can see you and you can see more clearly. So windshield wipers on, law requires nice. your headlights to be Absolutely. on too. Yes, I think New York was the first one to, to pass That's that. That's quite possible. Yeah. Why is it important to know your physical abil uh, abilities to drive safely? Sure. Well, Massachusetts <coughs> law, again, places all the responsibility of being um, physically and, and, and cognitively safe to operate, okay. all the responsibility is on the license holder. So when someone comes to the registry or um, goes to AAA to renew their driver's sure. license, um, they fill out an application. In that application, the registry asks a very important question about medical conditions. Okay. And the question is, do you have a medical condition that might affect your driving, yes or no? Okay. So right in that question is the liability piece. So a license holder needs to be sure that they are safe to operate, they're physically fit to drive, m cognitively fit to drive, yeah. because really most of the crashes that we see happening uh, for older adults okay. especially are due to medical conditions that might affect one's driving, like diminished vision, okay. slower reflexes, right. maybe there's a medical condition that has um, developed that um, is affecting a person's vision or, you know, there right. are a lot of medical conditions. So we need to make sure we are safe to operate, but f physically fit and mentally fit to drive safely. Okay, so that, I guess that's pretty important to, uh, to have that confidence to plan the route ahead. Sure yeah. is. That's a great point. Yes. Yeah, so take a moment before you even put the key in, in the ignition. Take a moment and in your mind visualize the route you're going to travel. And that may sound a little crazy, yeah. but drivers who are mindful of their driving and mindful of their destination tend to be involved in fewer crashes because sure. they're focused That's... on their driving. They know what route they're traveling. They're not guessing which turn they might have to take, and they're not especially looking at their navigation system. Right. Those are all, that's a recipe for a collision. So knowing your route, uh, knowing which way you're going to travel in your next destination really right. does help reduce the number of crashes on the road. Of course, many, many seniors that are, uh, um, you know, tech savvy would be using their GPS, but that should be mounted and uh, they should be, uh, you know, aware of uh, and listening to it and, and really not, not watching it. That's uh, correct. That is uh, correct. It's a huge, huge thing today. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Uh, what are the some uh, some of the common pitfall mistakes for uh, senior drivers? You know, we, can we summarize those. <laughs> sure, sure. For for older drivers, again, we we touched upon what seems to be the most common collision, and that is either pulling uh, pulling out from a driveway. Uh, into the main flow of traffic when it's not safe to do so. Okay. So sometimes older adults may become um, a little too familiar with their surroundings in the neighborhood. You might say to yourself, oh, I've driven Elm Street, you know, a thousand times. I know the traffic pattern. I know when it's busy. Yeah. I know. And that's a dangerous mindset to be yeah. in because you know what? There, there, there's really no uh, one pattern for a road. There could be a pedestrian. There could be a bicyclist. There could be an animal. Uh, you know, th there could be any sort of hazard on the road. Sure. So I think older adults, um, really need to be looking actively while they're driving and identifying potential hazards. And I like a, 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 to use the method, it's, um, I call it a play-by-play, -play, Lou. Okay. But, um, but while you're driving, identify what the potential hazards. When you, when you, for instance, when we leave here today, we go to the end of the driveway, we'll stop. Right. Full stop, as you full said stop. earlier. Yeah. Look to our left and identify what is coming to our left. You know, even say, okay, I see a black sedan. Then look to our right 
and tell yourself, what do you see? I see a green pickup truck. And look left again. Where did that black sedan go? It's gone by me. So just by you verbalizing what the potential right. hazards are, sure. um, it really does help the driver, uh, again, be aware of what's around. And, and, and they're looking actively. <coughs> Uh, driving is not a um, passive activity. Driving is an extremely Absolutely. active activity. So, so um, it's, a, it's a complex skill, like I said. So it takes from our head to our toe to be able to drive safely. Sure. Um, and really range of motion, agility, yep. strength, flexibility, believe it or not, those all, all play a big role yeah, in driving. Huge. Last but not least, a big culprit in terms of crashes uh, for older drivers might be medications. Oh, yes. And what are the side effects yeah. of any medication? Absolutely. And be very careful because if a doctor prescribes a medication, um, that pay close attention to how that medication makes you feel for the first couple of days. That's right. when the medication's introduced into your system. Your body will show any sort of side effect within the first 48 hours of taking okay. the medication. So yeah. I really want older adults to be a really especially aware if there's a new medication or any medication. If it affects your driving or your ability to operate safely, you're yeah. technically operating under the, the influence, influence right? Yeah. So whether it's prescription drug or maybe it's just over-the-counter medication, yeah. if it affects your ability to operate a motor vehicle safely, you're technically operating under the influence. Good. Good information. Yeah. Good. Well, I uh, just wondered if there are any uh, courses that seniors could take to help improve their driving. Oh, uh, yes, there are lots of resources available. Um, for one, the Registry of Motor Vehicles right. offers a free safe driving program called Shifting Gears. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we, we have presented it at the Danvers Council on Aging, and we present the program all across the state. Uh, AARP also has a wonderful program, a driver safety program. Yeah. AAA has some wonderful programs for older adults in terms of driver safety. Yeah. Um, and don't be afraid to even check out your local driver's ed school. The driver's ed school is not just there for right. teen drivers and younger drivers. <laughs> the driver's ed school will, will train anyone or give anyone a refresher class. As and well. then AARP has a course. Too. AARP yeah. has a terrific course called yeah. uh, driver, the Driver Safety Program. Yeah. So there are lots of great programs out there and lots well, of great resources. I know that you have uh, a uh, driver's uh, checklist out there that goes along with shifting gears. If we could uh, show that uh, on the screen and, and let's review that. Okay, the safe driver checklist. This is a list that uh, comes out when you, I believe, do the uh, shifting gears course. That's correct. And uh, some of the things that uh, are really interesting on here I find uh, especially, uh, you know, driving difficulty seeing clearly in the dusk and dark. But that second one, do headlights from other vehicles obstruct your sight? I've talked to many uh, seniors who uh, are, uh, they hate those uh, LED lights that they have on the cars today. And uh, they're, it, it sort of bothers them. Well, I picked up a pair of those uh, yellow uh, driving lights that uh, advertised on TV. And I just said, let me try these out. I found them to be very uh, effective. I think that uh, people should be aware of their limitations, of course, but uh, when you have those uh, bright lights, you know, you, you might think somebody's coming toward you and you, you flash your beams on there, as we used to do in the old days, because you think somebody's got their high beams on. Mm -hmm. uh, they shouldn't flash their high beams on, but because they, they'd be even brighter. Mm -hmm. So uh, they find them to be... Uh, uh, very helpful. What else should they know about those, though? Yeah, sure. Well, <coughs> you mentioned the yellow tinted lenses. So those yes. are, you know, specific eyeglasses mm -hmm. for um, some people will find if they're having difficulty seeing clearly at night, their eye doctor might be able to recommend these yellow tinted right. glasses that you say. But be be careful because not everyone benefits from the yellow tinted glasses. Okay. So it all depends on a person's eyesight. So I would really recommend before you run out and buy a pair of yellow tinted glasses to help you see clearly at night, yeah. talk to the eye doctor first, get, get some recommendations from the expert because depending on your vision, right. those yellow tinted lenses might not 
not help you. Absolutely. But here's another trick. If you're driving at night, and like you said, a, an oncoming car has the bright <coughs> lights, those high-intensity discharge lights, which are the bright white lights. Sure. Um, try to focus your vision uh, to the right side of the road, obviously, sure. while that car is coming at you, and also a little farther down the road. And sometimes that helps alleviate, Lou, that, that sensitivity to the bright lights. Okay. But that's another natural part of growing up. Although we are seeing less light as we grow up, our eyes are becoming more sensitive to bright lights. Sure. So that's kind of Absolutely. a double whammy yeah. for, for driving at night. So my advice is really avoid nighttime driving if you can. Uh, you know, make arrangements to, to maybe uh, Uber or Lyft or have right. someone else do the driving yes, at night yes. or plan your activities for daylight driving. But yeah. really for older adults, it is problematic because we're seeing less light naturally. That's right. Um, so that well, does affect yeah. our nighttime vision. Well, I really appreciate that uh, check, safety checklist okay. there. And anybody, if they would like to, could uh, call the... Uh, the uh, Danvers Council on Aging, and uh, I will give you that uh, number uh, and uh, that you can get one of those checklists. And uh, also we're thinking, you know, possibly in the future, if they haven't done it before, but we'd like to have it again, possibly that uh, safe, safe driver's uh, class at the Senior Center, that would be great. Um, so we really appreciate uh, your being here today. It's Thank been excellent. You. And uh, we have, uh, if you want more information, you can call the Registry of Motor Vehicles Community Outreach Coordinator, Michelle Ellix, at 857-368-9457 for more information. Or if you would like a printout of today's topics, you can call the Danvers, Senior, uh, Danvers Triad Council at the Senior Center at 978-762-0208. And we'll get that information out to you as soon as possible. So we thank you for watching our uh, eighth Triad Corner program. And thank you, for Michelle, for being my guest today. It's my and, pleasure. Uh, thank you. We very much appreciate you being Safe here. Safe travels. Safe travels. Thank you. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.